Hello and welcome back to another episode featuring the disgruntled octopus. And I'm in the corner today. I'm hello. I don't know where I am. I'm a bit <laughs> a bit perplexed. Normally I'm on the full screen looking at everyone else and you know pointing fingers and tentacles and everything else at other people and you know and drawing attention to them. But today it's all on me. So I've actually had a lot of people recently reach out to me regarding drop shipping um, off the back of comments that I've made on the podcast and also reaction videos that I've been doing lately. So what I want to talk about today is obviously drop shipping and. Um, I suppose from what I learnt over the 12 to 18 months that I was actually quite heavily involved in the space. To be brutally honest, I don't drop ship anymore. Would I drop ship again? No, I wouldn't. And I will go into those reasons later. However, a lot of people have asked me about it and yeah, I, I want to give them a no BS um, point of view and also a bit of a... Um, bit of a how-to guide, I suppose you could probably say. So I will teach you today in this little video. It's not going to be a very long one. What to do, how to look for it, um, potentially what products to source um, and to show you how to drop them onto eBay and what to look for. So what I want to bring attention to first is the eBay drop shipping policy. So what I want to do, and this is part of the reason why I wouldn't drop ship because the risk versus reward is probably <laughs> a bit not, not lined up as much as I would like. So realistically, eBay will let you drop ship if you are sourcing from a private wholesaler or distributor. So myself and 99.9% .9 of the other people that talk about drop shipping on uh, on YouTube will be doing something contradictory to what eBay is allowing you to do. Um, personally, when I was doing drop shipping over the period of 12 to 18 months, and I did a lot of sales, I'm not, <laughs> I can't dispute that. Um, I'd never got a warning, I never got in trouble, I never had anything come down my way um, from a negative point of view, like no negative feedback, no neutral, because realistically, the way that I do it is the customer is the central focus for this. You don't worry about the money, the money will flow if you take care of the customers. But realistically, what you can't do is actually, well, in accordance with the policy, is you can't um, source your products through alternative platforms such as um, you know Amazon or Macari or those different ones like Poshmark and drop ship to eBay or alternatively getting from a retailer so you know going to Costco or going to Catch of the Day going to Walmart going to Home Depot and all those different things but like I said 99.9% .9 of the people that are on YouTube talking about drop shipping will tell you to do this way so the reason why I wouldn't do drop shipping again is potentially because of the issue for account suspension like I said, I never got into trouble. However, I have heard of people in the States um, that have had their accounts suspended uh, purely for any reason. So if there's a like a, um, I suppose, a flag dropped on their account that they may be drop shipping because uh, quite heavy, they might go quite heavy into drop shipping where I, I start off very slow, you know, find a very good product and build yourself up from there. Um, when I was doing drop shipping, I was probably floating around the 20 products at a time. If I was to do it again, I'd probably just you know hone in on five products and just focus on those five products and just sell those and obviously go from there um, because it is quite time consuming what you want to do and obviously do those different things. A lot of other YouTube content creators may talk about like uh, software like AutoDS and all those different things. I don't think you need it. Um, I was doing probably over the course of 18 months, I probably did about 12,000 to 15,000 sales <laughs> in drop shipping. Um, and it was all manually. So I did it myself. I didn't pay for any um, secondary softwares or VAs or anything along the lines of that. So like I was saying, it's, it's quite a slug. Um, it's quite, you know, quite lucrative if you know what you're doing and you do the right products. However, like I said, the, the, the risk versus reward might necessarily be there if you do cherish your eBay account. <laughs> So without further ado, we will discuss it now. So what I'll do first is I'll actually bring up my favorite uh, drop shipping platform that I used to do or the retailer that I used to get from. So I used to use catch.com.au and I will go into a little bit before. You can also use Costco, either in the States or in Australia or wherever you are. Also use Kmart to a degree as well. I found them quite good. Um, you can always use Walmart if you're in America. Um, Home Depot and all those different things. So what I normally do is I have mentioned previously in the podcast that I used to you know, look at glasshouse candles. So what I'll do today for the example is I'll show you some glasshouse candles. Why I like Catch the Day um, or catch.com.au is it actually links up with different websites. So you can actually pay, I think it's a, maybe $10 a month uh, to become a member of OnePass, which gives you free shipping and flyby points, which is kind of like a rewards program that they use. Um, across all these stores. So you've got Kmart, Target, Catch of the Day, Bunnings and Officeworks, all with free shipping. Um, as long as that product's 
you know, supplied by those retailers, we can you know, get free shipping on that, which makes it a lot easier. So you, if you sell numerous products, and it will take a couple of days for a product to you know, get into the algorithm and start pushing you out, uh, with this the, the cheaper priced items such as these candles here for $33 or you know, your $9.99 products and all those different things, I probably wouldn't promote at the time. Um, when I did drop shipping, there was no real heavy emphasis on promoted listing, so I, I was avoiding that, which was quite luckily. Um, so not Normally for these candles, when I was dropshipping, I was getting between five to seven dollars profit every candle that I shipped out. So if you are watching this as an obstructional video, what I normally do is look out for the bottom uh, for that one pass of free delivery. It's the same for our US friends. So basically, if you ship from Walmart, um, you will just look for the Walmart supplied thing. You don't want to go through a third party. And also Costco, I'll get to that in a second. So for example, we're just going to look at this. Um, glass house candle here because it comes with one pass that we can potentially look at it so what i want to do is to see if there's actually another drop shipper that's actually using it i'll normally copy um maybe just about to there so i'll copy that and i'll drop it into a ebay search so i'll just go here give me two seconds apologies and they'll bring up all these different ones and i can guarantee you 99.9 .9 times out of 100 uh, all these ones here are drop shippers the ones you see here with all the little stuff around the sides and all, yeah, the super sale and all these different things, I think it hinders your your um, your sell through rate. And I know I was watching a video from Brad, Brad and Jazz, the two Aussie thrifters, where they talked about eBay Retail Fest, and Google won't you know favor these listings over uh, just a plain background, which is one of these ones. The beauty about Catch of the Day is you can actually use this photo. Um, to basically not not so much this one because it's got the two for 59 uh, but you can use their promotional photos and save it and use it as your ebay listing and i just always use the description and go from there so that's for that but when we go back to here so i'll just use this one as an example because this is blatant to me that it's a drop shipper you click on these different things and he sold six already at that 41.49 price and how much did we say they were they were uh, $32 so he's dropping them for $42 so potentially after fees and promoted listings probably walking about three or four dollars which doesn't seem like a big thing in the grand scheme of things however if he sells you know like I said that when I was selling these candles I was selling them probably in the hundreds over the course of you know that 18 months so that does you know catch up quite quickly um, just going back to our little friend here so I do notice he's got 98.8% with a 943. So I wanted to double check his, um, his profile just to see what else he's drop shipping as well. So this is, yeah, <laughs> you can tell he's a drop shipper, yeah, gone crazy. But realistically, what I want to do attention to, so he's he's sold 3.3, yeah, 3,300 worth of items, and there's a good chance that they're all drop shipped. So you probably go through there and work out which products he's doing. But he wanted to find out how old his accounts is two years old. So in the last two years, he sold 3,300 items, which is pretty good uh, under drop shipping. And like I was saying is that you're not actually holding inventory for this stuff. You're actually not, you know, you're not purchasing until the customer purchases. So if I went and bought this, you know, candle, he would go to Catch of the Day and have it shipped from Catch of the Day. Uh, one thing that I constantly got asked was that, do people care that it comes in a Costco box or a Walmart box or you know, a catch of the day box? I never had one complaint. You know, Not one person reached out to me and said, hey, look, this was delivered in a Costco box or a catch of the day box and all these different things. So like I said, it's not a big showstopper. Um, I did that. I kept my feedback at 100% like all those sales. Um, not like this gentleman. We'll check out his feedback in a second. So he's got quite a heavy <laughs> neutral and negative feedback. So I'll just click on the neutrals. So in the last 12 months, he's had 13 negatives and 17 neutrals. And this is what I was saying earlier is the customer's your primary focus. So what I normally do, um, there, here we go. So advertisers fast delivery by TNT or Aramax says he is based in Brisbane, but the parcel came from more banks. So this, per, yeah, catch the day box. And this is what I was saying is that you need to be very mindful of um, what you're selling, what you're doing, all these different things. So like I said, that this person's, yeah, I don't buy any catch of the day anymore. I had problems with them in the past honoring returns of mobile phones. So this is something you need to be very mindful of is that, you know, people might be savvy to drop shipping now. Like I said, I normally um, never had a, well, I never had any complaints when I was doing it. So you just be mindful of this. Um, the customer's always right. Drop shipping becomes more complicated with returns. I've had very, very, very few returns. I did screw up a couple of times and did lose multiple hundred dollars orders, which were offset by other um, other orders. Uh, so you do need to be mindful of that as well. 
But like I said, that you know, for 13 negatives and 17 neutrals in the last 12 months, that's quite high. And just goes to prove that, you know, from I suppose from a perspective, is that eBay doesn't necessarily care that you are drop shipping in Australia because, you know, that's quite a heavily, um, you know, three neutrals and three negatives in the last, you know, in the last month. Um, kind of gives you know gives me pondering that does ebay care a bit more about the fees opposed to the customer's experience <laughs> so what i'll do now is basically you know like i said you, you what you would do if you, if that product was a viable one you just go sell similar or create a listing drop the photo in um, make it around the same price point work out what your fees and your postage are all those different things uh, and sell it and escape off the block you need to make sure that you are making a profit on it because you don't want to be making um you know you don't want to be losing money on these different things so i'll jump out of there for a second i'll move it across to costco so with costco i found that i used to drop ship quite heavily off the last chance so what i would do is go through and look at things um for example the the earbuds or you know the smaller things like you know like lights uh, these recovery tracks you know for your four wheel drive on the beach and all these different things i wouldn't do big ticket items like these tall boys or the the bin racks and all these different things because Costco, what I found was actually they used a courier that only serviced major areas. So if you had someone in the middle of, you know, bumfudge Idaho um, buy, you know, an item from you, such as, you know, this vertical smoker and it wouldn't deliver to them, you're potentially causing yourself more problems in that one. So like I said, that you could just basically copy and paste, copy, paste, and we we can actually work out if anyone's drop shipping that item. And it doesn't look like it. Because normally it's just a lot of dropshippers are quite lazy in the sense that they just uh, copy and paste. So we can always look at sold, and there you go. So potentially uh, <laughs> it might be might be worth looking at dropshipping that. So uh, where are we? Going back to Costco, they're $139, $140, and they're looking at for $170. So not really a lot of money in that respect. Um, this is probably dropshipping from that perspective as well. So just be mindful of that. So. With uh, Catch of the Day and Costco and all these different things, you can primarily just use the descriptions they've got there, use the photos they've got there, um, just clicking the ones that you obviously, it's a drop down menu from their, that perspective. If I'm drop shipping, I never did variation listings that, I just listed them separately. So it'd be just, yeah, doll one, doll two, doll three, doll four, and just have that corresponding picture uh, for that listing as well. So what I want to is Kmart, Kmart as well. Kmart big on home appliances. A lot of people, you know, getting pie makers and you know sausage roll makers and all these different things. Um, I was able to drop ship them and make a little bit of profit on that as well. So that's always good. Uh, Walmart, like I was saying, is that I know people use the Walmart Plus platform. I think it is. It's very similar to what Catch of the Day is with One Pass. Um, you can just basically pay a monthly fee and have all your items. You know, delivered to them potentially. Um, what I would steer away from is Amazon, previously mentioned, uh, because eBay does crack the sides over that. Home Depot, I haven't really drop shipped from them before, so I can't really comment on that respect. However, that you know, anything Halloween, I'm finding anything seasonal like Christmas, Halloween, um, not so much Easter, but Halloween and Christmas are the big ticket items. I did drop ship a lot of Halloween items from Costco, did quite well out of it. So potentially look at doing uh, that from that perspective as well. <clears throat> so yeah, so like I said, it's quite easy from that respect. I won't go into it too much. Um, so basically, like I said, you just need to really copy and paste the, the title in. I'm finding that you'd be more successful if you use buzzwords, keywords, and all those different things. So I'd probably use glasshouse, candle, uh, you know, Galapagos, you know, kefir lime and cocoa butter. Use the keywords, move, mix them around a little bit more, make them more, uh, make it trigger happy and all these different things to make people uh, purchase off you opposed to anyone else. So realistically, if you're going to do this, don't, don't put all the crap around the sides and go from that perspective. But what I'll do, so if you are wanting to another video of like basically in depth into, you know, drop shipping and what I do and all those different things, please let me know, put in the description box below, or sorry, the comment box below, and if you'd like a, a longer form video so I can actually walk you through and, you know, make some listings and do all those different things and show you how the, the whole process works. And if you, if you did enjoy this little video, I know it's a bit off kilter and <laughs> a bit different to what we normally provide, but you know please like and subscribe i would really appreciate that but like i was saying is that i would personally stay away from from drop shipping if you are looking at drop shipping probably use it as a very short-term fix look at it for building a um the fundamentals of an ebay store like i was saying this individual here he's got quite a high negative and neutral rate um 
by virtue of just basically you know or the, the customer base he's dealing with so i would you know potentially look at you know maybe generating some money through this to provide a different um to funnel into different business ventures but i wouldn't make it a long-term investment because the longer you sit in the drop shipping, drop shipping space uh the most more likely you are going to you know come under the ire of ebay and like we said with that neutral feedback where they're basically saying that they ship from brisbane um yeah, so he's got multiple locations there. So, you know, if he ships from Brisbane, all those different things, um, eBay is eventually going to catch on to that. But like I was saying, it's, it works. Yeah, try it. Don't try it. It's really up to you. You're an adult. <laughs> you know, your risk of tolerance. So by all means, we'll, um, you yeah, know, thank you very much and we'll catch you next time. Bye.